When Abu Talib died, this proved to be a very politically difficult time for the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because Abu Talib was his, in our times, visa or passport to living Mecca. Right? Abu Talib was his protection. Everybody wanted him out. None of the elders of the Quraysh wanted him to be in Mecca. And so with the death of Abu Talib, he was in a very precarious situation. And so the Prophet ﷺ decided in the month of Shawwal, basically the same month that Khadija dies, a few weeks after Abu Talib dies, life in Mecca became almost impossible because there was nobody to really protect the Prophet ﷺ. This is when the Prophet ﷺ began thinking about leaving the city of Mecca. And the first city that he thought, thought of was the city of Ta'if. And so the Prophet ﷺ decides to leave and try a secret attempt. He doesn't publicize this. So he, along with Zayd ibn Haritha, ventured on foot so as not to arouse any suspicion. To walk up there is a day and a half or two days. And he presented himself to the leaders of Ta'if. And there were three brothers, Abdi Yalil and Mas'ud and Habib, the sons of Amr. So the Prophet ﷺ sets up a meeting, tells them that he's in the town, he needs to talk to them. And so he presents himself to the three of them. And he presents the message of Islam and asks them to convert to this message. But all three of them rejected and they rejected in the utmost sarcastic manner. One of them said that if Allah has sent you as a prophet, I might as well tear down the curtains of the Kaaba. The second one said, A'udhu Billah. The second one said, has Allah not found anyone better than you? And the third one said, I cannot speak to you. Because if you really are a prophet, then you're too holy for me. And if you are, A'udhu Billah, a liar, then you are too beneath my dignity that I respond to you. So all three of them mocked him with the utmost mockery. And the Prophet ﷺ stood up to leave and said, very well, if you have rejected my message, then at least do not tell the Quraysh of my visit. According to uh, the more authentic reports, he didn't just leave Ta'if right then and there. Rather, he stayed there for around a week. So he preached there for a week and we have authentic reports of some of the later Muslims recalling from Ta'if, later converts recalling, I remember the Prophet ﷺ preaching in Ta'if, in the Sukh, in the marketplace. And nobody responded to his call, i.e. nobody converted to Islam. And in one such incident, when uh, somebody might appear to have converted, this is what sparked them all. So even after the leaders rejected him, he stayed in the city approaching the laymen. So there was a potential of some people converting. And that was when the leaders of Ta'if panicked. And they sent the mob against the Prophet ﷺ. They gathered together, the riffraff, the ruffians, they gathered together, you know, the people who have nothing better to do. And they told them, they told these people to go and stone this man out of the city. And so here is when the story that we are all familiar with, that they came and they pelted him with stones. And Zayd ibn Haditha radiallahu ta'ala an tried his best to protect him. He himself was injured from head to toe. But how much can you protect when the both are running? And this was when uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, bled and his sandals were soaked with blood. And there is no protection from an entire mob that is pelting them until finally they let him out of the city. And we have a beautiful narration from Aisha radiallahu anha reported in Sahih Bukhari that Aisha radiallahu anha said that, O Messenger of Allah, was there any day that was more difficult for you than the day of Uhud? And the battle of Uhud, the Prophet ﷺ is almost about to lose his life, two or three wounds come to him and Aisha, uh, the Prophet ﷺ immediately says, Yes, indeed your people have hurt me a lot. And the worst irritation that I got was on the day of, he called it the day of Aqaba. Aqaba is where the stoning took place. This was outside of Ta'if. On that day, I presented myself to Abdi Yalil ibn Abdi Kulal. They didn't respond to me the way that I wanted. And so I found myself in grief and sadness. And I didn't notice where I was until I reached Qarn al-Tha'alib. Qarn al-Tha'alib is a place around 7-8 kilometers outside of the city of Ta'if. We in our times would call this being in a state of shock. And that is where we learn of the famous story as well that uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he saw some shelter, he saw some shade, he sat under a tree that was next to uh, a, guard, a garden wall. It was a wall that was uh, the garden and he did not know that this garden belonged to 
uh, Utba ibn Abi Shayba that was a distant, basically his father's second cousin. And he was where the Prophet ﷺ sat down and he said that famous dua which is mentioned in uh, the Sirat of Ibn Ishaq. Allahumma inni ashku ilayka da'fa quwwati wa hawani ala nas. Oh Allah, to you I complain of my weakness and my lowliness before men. Anta arhamur rahimeen wa anta rabbul mustad'afeen wa anta rabbi. You are the most merciful of all those who have mercy. And you are the Lord of those who are humble. And you are my Lord. To whom do you leave me with, O oh Allah? Who else can I go to other than you? To somebody who's a stranger, who is going to treat me harshly. Or to a close relative, whom you have given power over me, i.e. Abu Lahab. As long as you're not angry with me, then I don't care. Except for the fact that your protection from tribulation, your ease and comfort, this is more easy for me. Allahumma inni a'udhu bi wajhik. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in your face. Your face, that is the source of all of the light of that uh, releases or that gets rid of the darkness. And because of which all of the affairs of this world and the next are rightly guided. I seek refuge in your face that your anger comes down upon me or your wrath envelopes me. It is your right to criticize size until you are content. And there is no power or change except with you and through you. So the Prophet says this dua under a tree next to a wall and little does he know that this wall actually belongs to his distant uncles Utba and Shaiba ibn al-Rabi'ah and they had seen the Prophet ﷺ being pelted from the distance. They had seen the blood coming from him. They had seen him sitting down under that tree and they felt pity for their blood relative. This was their cousins or their second cousin's son. This is a Qurashi, fellow Qurashi. And so they decided to gift him some of the fruits of their orchard. And so they sent their servant whose name was Addas. And Addas was an Iraqi Christian. And so Addas comes to him and says, this is a gift from my master. So the Prophet ﷺ took it and he said, Bismillah. And he began eating. Addas was shocked and he goes, what is this phrase, Bismillah? And so the Prophet ﷺ said, this is uh, something that my Lord has taught me. And where are you from, O Addas? Addas said, I am from Nineveh. So the Prophet ﷺ smiled and he said, from the city of Yunus ibn Matta. Addas was shocked. And he said, how did you know Yunus ibn Matta? Nobody in this whole land has ever heard of Yunus ibn Matta. And the Prophet ﷺ said, how do I not know Yunus? He is my brother and I am his brother. We are both prophets of Allah. And so Addas instantaneously began kissing the feet of the Prophet ﷺ, as the Christians did to respect their elders and their, and their rabbis and their priests. And he believed in him right then and there. There is a symbolism here that Ya Rasulullah, even if your own people and the people that are closest to you, Ta'if and Makkah, have rejected you, know Ya Rasulullah that you are upon the truth. And even a person from the furthest world, from the furthest corners of this land, even these people will recognize your truth. And a time will come when his people as well, the people of Iraq and the people of all of those faraway lands will recognize this. That even if the near have rejected you now, the far shall accept you soon. The two masters are staring in shock that they send their slave with grapes. And all of a sudden he is kneeling and kissing and touching the Prophet And when he comes back, they tell him, Wayhak, woe to you. Why are you kissing his hands and his feet? And Addas said, Oh my master, there is no one on earth who is better than he is. For he told me things that only a prophet could know. And they said to him, Oh Addas, he has bewitched you from your religion. Your religion is better than his religion. And later on, they tried to force Addas to fight in the battle of Badr. And Addas said, You want me to fight that man who was sitting under the trees? Wallahi, the mountains could not harm him. And he refused to obey his own masters and his own masters met their death at the battle of Badr.